Hey, Dean here in the Secret Underground Lair. In part of the dust collection series, the next tool along the way here is going to be the bandsaw. You can see by cutting some material just recently, the bandsaw just kind of gets covered in dust too. So, what comes on the dust on the bandsaw by way of dust collection, by default, is this little tiny nozzle here, which in practice I have seen to be pretty much useless. Even when you're cutting material, you can see dust flies out just about everywhere. So what I'm thinking of doing, I mocked up a little thing here in some cardboard. I've got a hose here, uh, opening here for the dust collector hose. Just a little box, kind of like this, that will sit up in here. We can see that. Just kind of sit in there. It will cover this and the surrounding area and with the dust collector vacuum or the, the suction created by the dust collector, we should be able to capture a whole bunch of dust that comes through uh, the area here. So that's what I'm gonna do. It'll be held in place. I've got two circles on the top of the box here. These will be little one inch extensions that go straight up and I'll have magnets on the top of that, so this whole piece will just kind of clip onto the underside of the bandsaw with magnets and be held in place. And there'll be magnets on this end with the hole to hold the hose. So let me get started on making some of these pieces. So there's the first piece marked out. Uh, this will be the end where the hose goes. You can see I've marked out, traced the uh, hose <clears throat> connection. So we'll be making a four inch hole in here and then on the outside of the box we'll be countersinking eight 10 millimeter holes with a Forstner bit that we can glue magnets in, but that's down the road. First bit, I'm going to cut this piece off here so I can make the two pieces, uh, two ends, and then we'll uh, uh, start making the other bits. sides. Back and bottom will be made of this. We'll have a couple pieces coming down the front now just to kind of close in the uh, close in this portion. They're going to be completely closed in but it will resemble this. That way. I'm going to be drilling a hole uh, using a hole saw, so I brought you in for a close-up look at that. The drill uh, that I'm using actually has two modes, one for driving and one for drilling. So I have it on the driving mode simply because uh, this is, a, you know, two inches from the center is going to be going much faster than the center. So it also provides a little bit more torque. 
So I've gone through about halfway. I'm going to flip this piece over and come through the other way now. And yes, there is clearance here. We have broken through, but <clears throat> the drill won't let go. So you can see the drill kind of got bound up in there uh, in my efforts to free it, the piece split into three. So this isn't going to be a critical structural piece. So I'm just going to glue this back together. So put some glue and clamps on there and this will be fine. <clears throat> so here's the next bit on our guide. Got the uh, two end pieces cut and the top piece cut. What I want to do now is cut a little track along here, similar to what we did in the hat uh, for the dust collector, uh, so that I can slide our little swirler material in and around that track to perform, uh, to make the bottom and the back of this little collector. That'll provide a nice smooth surface for the dust to uh, move around, shouldn't get caught up on very much. So I got to figure out how to make that track. I need to make that track on both ends. So this end and on the end that's up here. And I need to make it across the top piece that sits you know, across here. So those are, are the pieces. I need tracks uh, all over there. So let me figure out how to do that. All right, so here's what I got rigged up. Taking the plug that came out of this hole in the first place, I've set it back down in there, and I've taken a, a little uh, insert, a, a threaded insert. It's about a half an inch in diameter, again-ish. I'm not looking for absolute precision. So it's about an inch in, and I have put on a couple pieces of wood here, just tacked them in with my nail gun. And the theory now being, with my little uh, trim router, my one-eighth bit inch, uh, one-eighth bit set in about a quarter of an inch, I can now follow this line. When it gets to here, I'll just follow it around the corner and come out this side. So the, the motion will be like this, and I should be able to track that perfectly. Hmm. What could possibly go wrong? So I'll clamp this down, put you in a position where you can watch, and we'll get to it.
And there we are, one uh, channel cut. Okay, that'll be suitable. And just for fun. Let's see how that just will slip in here. Follow that track around and provide some nice shielding. So, we'll carry on, I'll mark up the other piece and follow, do the same trick. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, there's our piece, uh, all our pieces cut with the tracks cut out and just kind of standing loosely together. So what I will do at this point is I'm going to clamp, I'm just going to clamp these guys together, all, all these pieces. Uh, cut our slider material to the correct width and insert it and just see what kind of a fit and fixture we get. So here's our pieces together, uh, clamped together, just a little loosely. We'll take our swirler, and yeah, we'll call it that, and just slip that in. goes in beautifully so that provides a nice kind of curved edge at the back here it's all very nice and smooth we'll make sure that's all siliconed up so next next bit will be we'll cut a piece that will fit in here just so we can uh, tack this down a little more firmly uh, it won't come right out to the edge we'll have a little bit of a lip here just so that I have a smaller a piece to work with as it fits on the uh, bandsaw. But we can cut this off and then we'll put in that little piece there. I'll screw it together just so we can see how it fits before we do the final glue. Okay, we got our screws put into the ends, just holding this piece together a little loosely. Put in this little support piece here to keep that in, in decent check. Uh, what I'm going to put on now is a little piece in the front here. So we'll just take a, a piece of wood that we've got. A little scrap piece. I'm going to cut off that portion there and stick it in like so. Just to kind of cover up this part so that only this bit is the bit that's collecting dust. So let me, I'm just going to rip that through the table saw, then cut it to length on the table saw. And then we'll, uh, again, loosely screw it in place with a screw here and a screw here. I don't know if you noticed that as the, split, as the piece went through, it seemed to get hung up right back in here. And... Uh, reason for that is this plate is a little bit low in this corner so there are adjustments to this plate I'm gonna make that adjustment just to lift this up so I don't wind up uh, getting things jammed in the blade that's a bit of a hazard anyway we have this block cut I'm gonna mark them to length and then just cut them off in the uh, make one more cut on the saw Cutting this guy to length is simply just measuring here and cutting them there. I'm just kind of marking them where that ends. So it's not a, a super precise fit, doesn't need to be. It's just kind of get us in the ballpark. So that piece will just go in there like that. I'm just going to put in a couple screws to keep it there temporarily. So I have this, this little piece just clamped on. So he's just holding it nicely for me to do uh, some drilling.
countersink. and driving. Just adjusted that clamp so that this is uh, now got a flush face here and we can drill and drive a screw in there. Okay, and that is our the basic shell of our little dust collector for the bandsaw. What I need to do at this point is put a couple um, one inch riser blocks here to which I can affix the magnet and then it'll stay on clamped up on the bandsaw. And then we'll, through this outline here, we'll run around with a Forstner bit I'll do that on the drill press just so that I can be precise about how far down I'm going and then we can uh, glue some magnets in there and attach the hose to that. Uh, I do need to sand this off a little bit, this hole is still pretty rough, but let's just continue uh, prototyping. Okay, I've got some material here that I'll use for the riser blocks. Um, <clears throat> I have to have two distinct riser blocks. I can't just use a solid piece because these are actually going to go, um, I need them to be about an inch in diameter or one inch square because they're actually going to go inset into some of the webbing that forms the casting of the bandsaw table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to be uh, one inch by one inch square stock and then I'll cut little slices off it so that we can uh, affix it onto here and, and mount it up to the uh, glue it on here and then put the magnets on top of that for the bandsaw. But before we do any of that, I'm gonna fix up this uh, plate here on the uh, table saw to get that flush with the bottom of the table. So the adjustment to this table saw uh, plate is simply made with a little Allen wrench so there are four screws in the corners of these, uh, at, the, at the four edges of this. And simply tightening down lets you raise or lower that plate. So I'm feeling good, it's good there. Um, we're a little bit low up here, so I'm gonna raise this one as well. And I have to admit, this is the first time I've actually had to adjust these, so. Um, it's been holding up very well for the many years that I've had this saw. Yeah, it's a little better. was a piece of cedar that was cut under some tension and uh, you were feeling the effects of gravity as the camera slowly tilted. Sorry about that. 
So now I'm going to rip this through uh, one inch um, to give us a piece that we want one inch by one inch. It is going to be a little bit crooked, but we're not critical here on this, uh, this cut. Okay, there's a couple good spot, a good some stock. So I'll cut off some one inch blocks here, and then we can glue them on here. We'll get to figure out the exact spot that they need to be, and um, then put the magnets on them. Just going to say again how delighted I am with the dust collector pulling the dust in uh, from the table saw. Okay, again, it's not perfect. Uh, we still get a little bit of dust floating around, but compared to what I had before, which was nothing, uh, this is phenomenal. And again, I look underneath the saw, and there's just nothing underneath the saw at all. It's, this is just working really well, and I'm very happy. So, a huge improvement to the saw. Okay, these guys are going to go in here. You can almost see that from where you are. So these little one inch blocks are going to sit on top of the, of the thing like this. Magnets will sit in here. I have to figure out exactly where in this orientation and this orientation they're going to be, but we can figure that out. And uh, yeah, this will uh, clip onto the saw. And I just realized I made another mistake. This piece is supposed to be over here. Oops, so I'm going to have to move that over to here. And then we'll give it a fit. Ah, this is what happens when you work on a piece upside down. So you're getting a look at the underside of the bandsaw, uh, the table of the bandsaw. These little blocks are intended to go up in here. One here. And one over here. Uh, and we'll have magnets on this side so that that'll just stick on tight uh, to the saw here and here. And what I'm going to do to help me identify where these, these bars are is I'm going to run a little bit of masking tape across here. Then I can mark on that and then transfer those lines onto the little jig that we've made, the adapter. So we've got one coming out here, we've got one here, and, and the edge is about there. So as I put this in here, and I line it up roughly where I want it to be, which is about there. I now know that the webbing, I'll have a piece of webbing there, there's a piece of webbing there, and there's some webbing over there. So with those webbing indications marked, here we are, one here, one here, and one here. I know I can set the blocks. For example, I could set a block in here, and I can set a block in here. And I'm using some pretty heavy duty magnets, um, substantially beefier than what we had uh, for the going on the end of the dust collector hose. So I have no doubt that these are gonna be held on really well. The other thing I want to do is make sure that I get them in 
guess I can bring you up top now. Hang on. There we go. So the other thing I want to do is make sure that I get the magnets. Uh, the edge of the bandsaw table is right here on this line. So I want to make sure I put those magnets in a little bit farther. And I'll just do some quick measurement and figure out where I want to place them. So we'll have one block about here and one block about there. Magnets glued on top of that. Actually, these magnets have holes so I can screw them in. Um, so they won't move at all. And then that will just clip on to the bottom of the bandsaw. That's the theory. So give me a couple minutes to get uh, some of that set up and I'll be right back. So here are the magnets that I'm gonna be using. Uh, I got two of them stuck together there. One on the top of each of these things, these blocks. Now these magnets are incredibly powerful. I try, just tried pulling them apart a minute ago and they came together and pinched my finger, I actually drew blood. So that's just the force of these guys pinching together. Man, these are powerful, powerful magnets. So you can see they have a countersunk hole in the top of them. They come with some screws. So these magnets will be screwed into these blocks. These blocks will be glued down to uh, the little uh, holder. So I'm gonna get these um, little box glued in place for now. And while that glue is setting up, I don't know where I wanna put those, put them there. So while that glue is setting up, <clears throat> I'll sand down the inside port uh, and drill the um, holes on this side for the magnets for the uh, dust collector, for the hose. So let me get that gluing underway. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'm set up on the drill press to uh, cut the um, recesses for the magnets that'll hold the hose onto the adapter. I put on my carpenter's band-aid, you know, Kleenex and some electrical tape, just to keep from getting blood everywhere from that magnet incident. And uh, yeah, let's just cut these holes. We got the uh, recesses for the holes for the magnets cut. I'm gonna go through and sand out this interior part of the hole just to kind of make that smooth. And in fact, what I'm gonna to try to do on the inside edge here is kind of give it a little bit more of a round over to help the dust uh, blow out a little better. So I'll go over and do some sanding now. Okay, I'm ready to apply these little uh, 10 millimeter uh, magnets. So I'm gonna be putting them into the, each of the holes. Again, these will go in in a north-south, 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 north-south orientation, just so that there is no, uh, it just makes it easier to do it that way and I don't have to worry about making sure that I have, you know, they don't have to label the magnets, I don't have to do anything. It just makes life a lot easier. So I'm gonna use this uh, super glue here um, I'm not using the activator, so this will take a little while to set, but I'm okay with that too. I'm putting a pretty heavy dollop um, just so that there's, it goes all around the magnet. a very healthy drop in each of these little slots. Again, I want that little magnet to be completely surrounded by glue. <clears throat> One thing you may have noticed on this um, this build is that I don't have the edge going around uh, where the magnets are going to sit. So I'm doing four in this orientation just because it's easy to set them in, in theory. I'm 
we'll say in theory. Then I can flip the stack of magnets over and do four in the other orientation. our magnets stuck in place. We'll give that glue a little time to set up. I know, I know, I know. I got glue all over my fingers. Dare to, I'll be fine. Okay, and the glue that we've got uh, to hold the uh, little blocks on is still setting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that for about another hour. Uh, I just wanna make sure that that is absolutely rock solid before we try and play with these super powerful magnets. Because um, the magnets will, if that glue is not set, the magnets will just rip those blocks right off. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little while. And uh, yeah, we'll come back when we're ready to uh, tackle the next bit. All right, the glue has had a chance to set up here. So we'll be attaching magnets onto these. Uh, our dust collector hose will now snap onto the side, just like that. Uh, currently, it's not the, the tightest fit. I would like to put something around there, but I'll worry about that in a bit. Uh, for now, I think this will be just fine. It comes off easily. So let's focus on getting uh, these magnets Put in place. I don't have a very good grip on my fingers to open up this plastic bag because you know what I I got I got glue all over my fingers somehow or the other. Okay, so that's the screw that will go in there. So I'm going to drill a little pilot hole. Uh, I don't want to, this is a pretty small block, so I don't want to split it. So I'll have a good pilot hole and we'll stick that in. strong enough to glue that in place so let's hope this holds this wood to wood. The little mark I have here on the top just a little reminder of how strong those glues are and what it can do to a finger. Okay, our magnets are attached. Now we're gonna uh, insert our little swirler mechanism. Shiny side inside. Want to be careful, I don't want that magnet clamping onto the top of the table saw necessarily. Okay, so there we are. That's mounted there. Our hose is going to connect onto that. So, 
and we should be able to suck some dust out of the bandsaw. So let me get this put in place and we'll give it a rip. All right, so we got our dust collector mounted uh, now inside the bandsaw. There's a little bit of a gap here that I may want to try and uh, tidy this up a little bit, but we'll see what this does in terms of uh, dust airflow rather and dust collection. We'll attach the hose and see what happens. Before anything, I'm gonna wipe off the top of this so that we have a clean measurement. All right, the dust collector is on. You can hear it wailing away. Well, we'll just do a few cuts and see what we get. Okay, that uh, that worked out pretty well not perfect uh, but again considering coming from absolutely nothing uh, this did a really good job let me just bring you over close to take a look at what's on the table and around the saw so there's just a little bit of sawdust uh, on the table as, as a result of all of these cuts that we did uh, substantially better than what it would have been without the dust collector that is absolutely sure uh, we did get a bunch of dust uh, coming back up here that I guess comes up through the wheels and the blade. Uh, a little bit of sawdust left on the back here. Uh, so <clears throat> what I will likely need to do is close uh, a little bit off here. Sorry. Close this section off a little bit. I could probably also <laughs> apply some um, silicone all around there just to make this dust collector mechanism a little better. Uh, and maybe do a little bit more on the far side there. There's still some gaps. Might be able to tighten that up a little bit. But overall, so much better than nothing. So I'm happy with this. I guess we're on to our next machine. That'll either be the drill press or should we try and tackle the work table sawmill? Hmm. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.